In today's video, we are going to create an effect like this using an effect called the CC Pixel Poly in After Effects. It's a fun and interesting effect which you can easily achieve. So if you're interested in creating this effect, watch the video to the very end and I'll show you the step-by-step -step guide on how you can create or achieve something like this. So without much further to do, let's dive into the video. In After Effects, this is a composition I'll be working with and this is an image I'll use to demonstrate the effect on. The first thing I'm going to do is add in the CC Pixel Poly effect onto the image. So I'll go to the effects and presets where all of the effects are found in After Effects and I'll search the CC pixel poly and drag and drop it on top of the image and that's the first step immediately as i drop the effect onto the image you see that it starts taking effect and i'll explain why this is happening bring back my playhead to the very start that is at zero seconds moving under the effects control you will find the cc pixel effect and all of its properties and we are going to go through all of these properties explaining the function of each property to explain the first property i'm going to be using an example to demonstrate it by default when you apply the cc pixel poly onto the image you will notice that it scatters the image and the particles move from the original position and scatters around the composition. This is because the force value is set to 100 and the gravity is set to 1. I'm going to set the gravity to 0 and I'll come back to it in a second. For the force here, if I set it to 0, then I play this. You see that it scatters the image into tiny particles but it does not move from its original position. All of the particles keeps on animating on the same position. But if I change the force value to 20, it scatters everything around the composition. The main function is that it gives you the ability to spread out the particles all around your composition or if you want it to be on a static position and just keeps rotating on a single position. You can achieve that by changing the value of the force. Moving forward to the next property is the gravity. And as I Ella said here, when I change this value of the gravity to like let's say one, you see that the image will move downward. And when I set it to a negative value to about negative let's say two, it moves it upward. So that's the main use of the gravity effect to move the image you're working with or the video clip or even the graphics you're working with either upward or downward. Next, we have the spinning property. So when I zoom in, then I play this, you'll notice that each particle keeps spinning around. That's because the spinning is set to one and zero. That is 360 degrees rotation. So if you increase this, the more it will spin. And when you reduce this, the, the lesser it will spin. So let's say if I set this to zero, and then I set this to zero. You see that these particles are no longer spinning. They are just uh, moving from one position to another, but they are not spinning. Then if I set this to about, let's say three, you notice that each particle will be spinning on its own axis. So I'll set this back to one. You can animate this force center to control where the effect has a greater impact on your object. Next, we have the direction randomness and the speed randomness. This is really easy uh, just from its name. So this direction randomness, uh, increase it, it will change the direction of each particle. That is, it will just change the direction in a random order. Then this speed randomness here will increase the speed of each particle the way it animates, either by spinning or the direction that it animates from. And moving forward, we have the grid spacing. The more you reduce or increase this grid spacing, the more the particles either reduces or increases. So when you reduce the grid spacing, it reduces the size of the particles. And when you increase the spacing, it increases the size of each particle. You can play around with this value. Next, you have the object. Now this object determines the particle's shape, either polygon or square. So when we zoom, let me zoom in again. You notice that by default, it's a textured polygon. That is why we have some polygons. The, all of the shapes are in a polygon. So if I click on this, you will see that we have just polygon. Then we have textured polygon, which just adds in on top of the polygon. Then down below, we have square. Each particle now is a square rather than a polygon. Let me set this back to polygon. Finally, we have the start time. The start time determines when the effect has to occur. So it is set at zero seconds by default. When you add the effect and you play the animation, you see that the effect takes place immediately. You can change this depending on when you want the effect to take place. You can set it to, let's say, maybe some frames ahead or even some seconds. If I set this to about 0.5, that is half a second. 
so it will animate 15 seconds because my composition is set at 30 frames per second and half of 30 is 15 so it will play for 15 seconds before the effect takes place we have gone through all of the properties of this effect what if you don't want the effect to have an impact on your object at the same time and to achieve this we are going to be using masking i'll select my layer here with the pen tool i'm going to create a mask so this is the area that i first of all want the effect to have an impact on so i'm just going to roughly draw a mask around it i'll duplicate the layer by pressing command z open the mask here then i'll first of all change this value to subtract so that the entire image will be visible then i draw another mask again that's mask tool so this is the second area that i want the effect to have an impact on so let me first of all draw this here then I'm going to delete the mask one because I don't need it anymore. I'll duplicate it the third time. I'm going to cover up the section that was left. So I'm going to change this again as to subtract. Then I draw around this area that I want to cover. Then I delete the mask too. I have all of the mask on the right position that I want. Now the only thing I'm going to do is to change the duration in which the effect starts having an impact on the object. So for the first position here, or for the first section, which is this mask here, I want it to have an impact when the time is at 0.5 seconds. Then the second section here, I'm going to set it at 0.75. Then for the third position here, or the third section, I want it to have, a to have an impact when it's one second. So I'll play this for you to see and you'll see that each section starts depending on the time that I've given it. This is how you can control a particular area that you want the effect to have an impact on. And you can also play around with the timing so that it has an impact on this particular time before moving on to the other time. Make sure that the mask value is set to add, not subtract. That's it for today's video. I hope you found the video interesting and helpful. And if you did find it helpful, to implement it in your project and leave your feedback in the comment section below and I'll be there to reach your comments and leave my own suggestion. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video to support the channel grow. Thanks for watching and until the next one, keep editing.